everybody, CT Hippo. Uh, time for the next stage on the Raptor Rebuild project. Need to cut the material for the cockpit ring. Uh, got my veneer here. That's an oak. Interesting. I don't know. This was another restore find. I'm hoping to eventually do a video about the restore, but um, whatever this is, it's nice hardwood veneer. So, I'm going to table saw set up and rip a bunch of this stuff. We know that my form is two inches tall, so I'm going to go ahead and set the fence at two inches. Like that. And the blade is going to go down some. And for this and anything else, we're doing a lot of cutting. Always mask, ears, etc, etc. This still has a straight edge to it. Uh, well, we're well done. Let's get started. Cutting veneer is always a bit of a challenge because the, I don't know if I can see this here, but the veneer is actually thin enough that it will slide under the fence. And I haven't done this in a while, so I kind of forgot about that little phenomenon. So, I'm going to rip up a piece of something for the veneer to ride on as it goes through there. Plywood here, let's over from something. I'm just going to run it through.
pile of strips. Let's see if we're still recording even. Yeah, looks like we are. Okay. Uh, this probably isn't going to be enough to do all of it, but it's a start. I'll put the rest of this back up where it came from. Now that I've got the strips, I'm going to need to go through, clean them up a little bit. You can see that one's got a bunged up end. These aren't the most precise things in the world. Um, sometimes when it go, you know, it's got rough edges to begin with, it goes to the saw, it gets a little wonky. But once the cockpit ring's done, it'll get planed, and so a lot of that, a lot of that evil will come out. Uh, Next step's a little sketchy because I don't know, actually know how I'm going to do it. Um, but let's see if we can figure it out. So what I want to do next so I can get to a point where I'm not standing on this stuff. Is very slightly. What I want to do is very slightly, um, almost sharpen the ends. It's a process called scarfing, and the idea is that if you make each end bevel, they fit together, and so instead of being a butt joint, they, you know, have a larger bonding area. For most of this, it's not going to matter. But for the first wrap around the form, uh, it's a whole lot easier if you've got one long piece rather than a bunch of short pieces. And then once you've done that, the previous layers act as a form and you glue them to the previous layer. But for the first one, it's a real challenge. So uh, I'm going to try these on the belt sander and see if I can figure out how to scarf them. No idea if this is going to be remotely visible on the video, but we'll try it. So there's edge number one, there's edge number two. Put them like that, glue them, clamp them. Probably it's going to work best if we get it precisely lined up, and uh, we'll go from there. So I don't know how this is going to work, it's an experiment. of this plastic to use as a gluing surface that's non-absorbent.
This is just some random plastic, but it serves a couple purposes. Um, one is I can glue on it. It won't stick to whatever's underneath it because it's plastic. And two, it gives me a straight edge here to line the two pieces up on. So hopefully that'll make it all work a little better. So I don't know how much this is going to turn out, but we're going to try. Uh, I've got my two pieces here. Kind of paying attention to how I flip that over because it's going to matter. I've got my uh, plastic gluing base and then I'm using this level just as a straight edge to try to keep the sides aligned. Apply a little bit of glue. I'm using Type Bond 3. Uh, that's our general purpose, you know, kind of does everything glue. Apply too much to the first side, put some of it on the second. Oh, that's special. Just realized that I glued the wrong side, this one, because, you know, I'm special that way. So, flipping that over, putting the scarves together. Hopefully you can see how that works, that instead of just having a tiny, tiny amount of wood to make the joint, if I used a butt joint, by using the scarf joint, I've got this big big area and I want that to just tack together a little bit and then I'm going to clamp it with I was hoping that would tack together a little bit. Might have to adjust my clamping strategy here. And that's a that's a surprising amount of what goes into boat building is figure out how to stick two things together while the glue goes off. If you're building boats, you're gonna find yourself spending kind of an amazing amount of time going, huh, how do I clamp this together? In this instance, I'm going to use this other block of plastic, put it together like that, gently move this around, and clamp the shit out of it. I'm actually going to come out this way because that way I can check that everything's still in alignment. Clamp it like that. And then just for the sake of overkill, I'm going to stick two more on there. So that's a question that occasionally comes up. How many clamps do I need to build a boat? Every freaking one of them. So we're going to clamp it just like that and uh, let that go off a little bit. Now I'm not going to clamp every joint. Like I said, just the first two, maybe three, enough to get a loop all the way around the form. Speaking of the form, now that these are cut, you can see how this is all going to go together. You couldn't have probably figured it out before, but so there's that part. Let's see here. Take the longer ones. Another length.
what I've seen some people do for this process is actually use push pins and push pin the veneer into the into the cockpit form here. Um, never tried it, but you know, it's one of those things that the more times I do this, the more it seems to make sense. Just getting these puppies to stay put is a real challenge. So we'll go kind of like that. This is always the tricky part. It's up here at the front. Some number of hours have now passed. It's uh, about one in the morning. Let's see how this worked. That's not bad. See there, at least I hope you can see there. Uh, the scarf joint, it's yeah, okay, so it's a little thicker than the surrounding material, but it's not not horrible. So uh what next? Well, let's see how much this we can wrap around. We put the scarf joint, which is the weakest. This point right in the back. That gets us to there. So we're gonna need at least one more, at least one more scarf to make a full, full loop. So back to the sander and see if we can get anywhere with this. There's the sander. I promise you, once we get past this first set of scarves, this process gets a lot faster. Really, it does.
to line up that. I'm going to spot where it sits flush. Okay, well we'll put that together, let it dry overnight. 